This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Mental health isn't talking to someone on a couch, it's self-awareness, learning to set boundaries, taking care of your emotional well-being. Visit betterhelp.com super and see what mental health is really about. This video will contain spoilers for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Hey brother, who is Credence's mother. Guys, as of Secrets of Dumbledore, we have finally learned the true identity of Credence, and I have to tell you, it has been a wild ride. First, we're all like, okay, he's a muggle orphan, and his sister sure does seem sus, but then all of a sudden it's like, psych! Oh my god, it turns out he's the Obscurus causing all the destruction across New York City. Total plot twist. But then, next go round, we're like, oh my gosh, what if he's Lita's long lost brother? What if he's a Lestrange? Look, you can decipher the entire thing based on this family tree written on the wall on the side of a sewer. But then, but then, the story is all like, not to Day, Junior. Little did anyone except Little Lestrange know one truly dark secret that there were two babies on the ship and an exchange was made. Ooh. Holy goodness, who could have seen this coming? Okay, so he's not a Lestrange, but then, but then, just moments later, we find out a possible different name that he's actually Aurelius Dumbledore? But, but, is that even true? Was Grindelwald actually just lying about that? And even if he's not, did he know about the baby swap? Because if he didn't, then the baby who drowned at sea was actually Aurelius, and we still have no idea who Credence is. I love how not confusing it all is. But then, it turns out in Secrets of Dumbledore that he is confirmed to actually be a Dumbledore, and there are a lot of really fun explanations for how this could have turned out. Like, you know, to see all of our published works on the subject. For full details, see my published works. But ultimately, the simplest answer was the correct answer. He is the son of Aberforth Dumbledore and was conceived when Aberforth was 15 years old. Whew, it was a wild ride, but we finally got there. Except we still don't know who his mom is. But don't you worry though, guys, we have been hard at work getting to the bottom of this. There is still a couple of directions it could go, but today we're gonna cover all of them and try and find out who is Credence's mom. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Look y'all, it is officially May, and as summer approaches, my head is filled with thoughts of a nice cold brew coffee, a plunge into the ocean, a barbecue, and of course, sweating my butt off in the old Virginia heat. Luckily, MeUndies is there to give us all a soft summer in the most breathable undies, loungewear, and swimwear known to humanity. MeUndies makes every season more comfortable, but their summer lineup is a must have in my household. Because not only do I need to have comfortable, breathable jammies when I'm at home, but I also wanna make sure I'm looking very stylish whenever I go to take that pool plunge. And MeUndies swimwear is the coolest. I'll say it again, summer is sweaty, but your butt doesn't have to. The trick is their micromodal fabric, which will help you stay comfy all summer long. Plus they have super fun seasonal prints for you to choose from, from sizes XS all the way up to 4XL. And for those who are brave enough to get out in the heat, check out their new and improved swimwear styles. They're soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. No matter where you're lounging, make it a soft summer with MeUndies. And MeUndies has a great offer for our viewers. If you're a first time purchaser, you get 15% off. And if you sign up for their free to join membership, you can apply that 15% to their already discount membership prices. So get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Head over to MeUndies.com slash theories. One more time, that's MeUndies.com slash theories. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so going into this movie, we had a lot of fantastical explanations for who Credence might actually be, but in the end, it was the most simple answer just Aberforth's son. So today we thought we'd start with just the most simple explanation, that she's just someone, an off-screen mom who lived in Godric's Hollow at the time, not important, that's it. But I gotta tell you, that's really boring. And if that's the case, they could've just told us instead of leaving the mystery wide open for us to speculate on for, who knows, maybe another four years? Are they even gonna make a fourth movie? I, don't, I hope so. I, but no, the very fact that they left it so open really makes me think it is someone important, but Fortunately, we haven't been left with nothing to go on. We do have some guidelines to help us narrow in. First of all, we know whoever she is, she must have been living at Godric's Hollow at the time, since that's where the Dumbledore family lived. We also know she must have had a sister, based on the Crimes of Grindelwald screenplay, who describes the woman traveling with Credence as 
Credence's aunt. And speaking of the boat, we should consider that it is likely whoever it is has some sort of connection to America, since that's where the boat was sailing, although that's not strictly necessary. We also know that Credence himself is very powerful, meaning he probably comes from a very powerful family. Doesn't mean that any witch or wizard can't just be powerful, but I suppose it is worth noting. We also know that Credence is potentially a parcel mouth based on his ability to communicate with Nagini. Then there's also the fact that Grindelwald somehow knows that his name is Aurelius. So Grindelwald himself must have known about the birth of the child when it was born. And then lastly, we know Aberforth himself was 15 at the time of the birth. So likely the candidate is around that age as well. But again, not necessarily. You see how they're like halfway turned over a lot of rocks and you have to like fit together a bunch of assumptions. And look, I know this is a lot. So in order to help you sort of keep it straight, every time I switch to a new candidate, I'm gonna switch shirt so it's easy to remember. This lion, it's embroidered in gold thread. My first thought going into this was to try and narrow it down to any known families to be living in Godric's Hollow at the time. And it's kind of a short list. I mean, obviously the Dumbledores, but they don't count. We also know that Bethilda Bagshot lived there. Then there's also the Abbott family, as in Hannah Abbott, who eventually marries Neville, and then possibly the Potter family? Okay, so I doubt it's Bethilda herself, as she was already an adult when the Dumbledore family moved there. And we simply don't know anything else about her, other than that she must have had a brother or sister, since she is the great aunt, of course, to Geller Grindelwald. We know the Abbott family lived in Godric's Hollow for generations because Harry and Hermione see some of the gravestones when they visit in Deathly Hallows. But honestly, if he's related to the Abbots, then so what? Like, we just don't know very much about them. It seems like a kind of boring reveal. But so then the Potters? Could Credence be related to Harry? Well, first of all, I'll say it's hard to confirm that every single generation of the Potters actually lived in Godric's Hollow. We know James and Lily did, obviously, and we know that the family started there with Ignotus Peveril, but whether or not they continued to live there for the entire in-between is uncertain. Assuming they did though, we need a female teenage Potter from 1899. That's when Aberforth was 15. And while we don't know any named character like this, it's not impossible. The first modern Potter family member that we know of is this guy right here in the family tree, the unhelpfully named Mr. Potter. And it's possible he had a sister that we're unaware of who could have been the mother. That said, if that's true, there are no surviving lines of that side of the family, because otherwise Harry could have lived with, you know, anybody besides the Dursleys. No post on Sunday. <laughs> Not that important, but she would also definitely be the younger sister of Mr. Potter, because otherwise she would have inherited the invisibility cloak and not him. But honestly, I kind of doubt it. I mean, an unnamed sister who maybe lived in the right place? Mm it's weak. But on the other hand, Credence does sort of look like Harry and shares some other similarities. I mean, he is also a super powerful, gangly, dark haired, pale skinned orphan who was raised by people who hate magic. And being related to Harry or the Potters would be a very big reveal. So it does have that going for it. It's low odds, but possible. Moving on though, time for our next candidate and a new shirt. Speaking of having a potentially unnamed sister, hear me out on this one. What if Grindelwald had a sister? What, that we've just never heard of? You think they're just going to keep an important family member like that under wraps and just include them whenever it's convenient? Like Cre Creed, oh yeah, okay, they have done this before. Mm. So yes, if this is the case, she has absolutely never been mentioned before. And yet there is kind of a lot to like about this idea. First of all, we already know that Albus falls in love with Gellert. So it would be a nice parallel if Aberforth also fell in love with the sister. Plus then it would be someone of the correct age and would account for how somehow Grindelwald knew the name Aurelius? Aurelius Dumbledore. And, and she would have reason to be in the correct place at the right time because she could just also be visiting Great Aunt Bathilda. And besides that, there's just the incredibly present theme of duality across the Fantastic Beasts movies. Like, just look how many different pairs of siblings we have. You've got Albus and Aberforth, Newt and Theseus, Queenie and Tina, the swapped babies at sea, not technically siblings, but they are sort of a match set. There's the 
twin chillins in Secrets of Dumbledore. Each side always sort of seems to have that like matching counterpart, doesn't it? And on that note, do you know what the Dumbledore family had? A little sister that almost nobody knew anything about. Who knows? Maybe she liked goats. Plus, then after the deadly duel between Grindelwald and the Dumble Bros, there's like a built-in reason to send the child to America, just out of fear that Gellert would hurt it. Granted, there also then has to be a second sister for Credence's aunt on the boat, but we know that sister would die at sea and maybe the original mom died in childbirth. I don't know. Next candidate. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but this one has silver thread. Okay, so we've talked about the people who we knew were living in Godric's Hollow, but there's definitely room for other wizarding families to be living there that we just don't know about. In which case we need to look at our other clues, like are there any known families that could talk to snakes? Yeah, of course there is. And honestly, there's just the one answer the Gaunts, the direct descendants of Salazar Slytherin. And we know there is a family of Gaunts alive at the time. Voldemort's direct relatives, Marvolo, Morphin, and Merope. The Abbots and the Potters are also both pure blood families, which we know is important to the Gaunts. So if they were living in Godric's Hollow, they'd be amongst their kind of people. And we know that Ignotus Peveril lived in Godric's Hollow and that the Gaunts are descendants of the second brother, Cadmus Peveril, because they have the resurrection stone with the ring. So there is even a connection to Godric's Hollow. So yeah, so far so good. The only problem is that the only known female Gaunt at the time is Merope, and we know it's not her. Once again, we find ourselves in a situation where in order for it to be the Gaunts, it means that Marvolo, that's the dad, had to have a sister sister or cousin that we just didn't know about who could have been the mom. But this time I will say it feels a little bit more possible. I mean, we don't meet the Gaunts inside of Dumbledore's memory until after this time period, at which point obviously some family members have passed away because Morphin and Merope's mother is not present. And at first I thought, oh my God, could it have been their mom? Is that possible? But no, because obviously we need Gaunt blood to get passed down and Morphin is obviously the Gaunt side of the family. so. No. Except, and apologies, this is kind of dark, Dumbledore does mention that the Gaunts have a bad habit of marrying their cousins, so it's not impossible. And again, there'd be a built-in reason to send the baby away because the Gaunts are pure blood crazy and this would represent Marvolo's relative or life consorting with the half-blood Aberforth. In fact, there is also a potential built-in reason for Aberforth to not want to be involved or care about the child. Let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered how Merope managed to brew an OWL level love potion to seduce Tom Riddle? Because to me, it doesn't seem like the sort of thing an uneducated, heavily abused witch with little control over her magic could just figure out. Unless maybe there was another family member who did the exact same thing. Could Credence and Voldemort have been born from the exact same trick? Again, do you see the potential duality here? It's like, oh, it's like a mirror of the, of the Harry Potter story. Oh, whoa. Interestingly though, that is not the only available gaunt option for Credence. There is another potentially lost line of the Gaunts all the way over in America, who would also then be the direct descendant of the founder of Ilvermorny. Bronze, you guys. Bronze. Way back when Fantastic Beast 1 came out, Pottermore released a lengthy article all about the history of magic in North America. It is a very fun read, but in a nutshell, it tells the story of Isolt Sire whose mother was a woman by the name of Rionach Gaunt, who separated herself from the greater Gaunt family because she didn't agree with the family's pure blood superiority beliefs. Rionach's sister, however, Gorm Laith Gaunt, did not take kindly to this separation and took it upon herself to burn down Rionach's house with her and her husband inside. And then Gorm Laith rescued, nay, kidnapped the daughter, Isolt, who she then raised as her own. Isolt, however, eventually figures all this out and decides to flee to America, where she makes quite a name for herself as the founder 
of Ilvermorny. Gormleth eventually tracks her down and there's this like big fight, but honestly, that's not really important to the point I'm trying to make. What is important, however, is that Isolt marries a muggle man by the name of James Stewart. And together they have four kids, two boys and two girls. The boys, however, are actually both adopted, so they don't carry any of the gaunt blood with them. The girls though, you guessed it, are twins because the duality is just everywhere. And their names are Rionok for her grandma and Martha. Yeah, Martha Stewart. They did that. I'm not upset about that. But as ever, almost with all of the siblings in the Fantastic Beasts world, they are not the same. Rionok is a witch while Martha is a squib. Rionok decides never to have kids because she purposefully and intentionally does not want to extend the gaunt line. Martha, however, uh, eventually marries the non-magical brother of a friend from the Puckumtuck tribe and lives her life as a nomad. And whether or not Martha had kids is completely unknown, leaving the door wide open for there to be another gaunt descendant out there for Aberforth to fall in love with and have credence. Could Martha's descendants have moved back to Europe? Yeah, absolutely. And if they did, would they have likely end up in a park magic community like Godric's Hollow? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially if one of them was magical. Plus then there's the obvious tie back to America, which the ship was sailing to because that's where the family came from. And honestly, I like this particular line the best. I mean, it involves solving a mystery that was launched with the launch of the Fantastic Beast series. It would mean we get to involve Ilvermorny in all of this, and it would mean that Credence is a good descendant of Slytherin, you know, assuming he officially switches sides, which looks like it's happening as of the end of Secrets of Dumbledore. But again, then that creates that duality with Voldemort. Voldemort is a bad descendant of Slytherin and Credence would be a good descendant of Slytherin, which is then also the exact relationship between Gorm Lathgaunt and Isolt Sire. One good, one bad. And if you go back and read that article, you'll also learn there's a tree planted at Ilvermorny born of Slytherin's wand that is meant to represent this exact duality because you can't break any twigs off of it, but the leaves on the tree have healing properties. Good, bad duality, Credence can talk to snakes, ties to America related to Voldemort. It's all there, you guys. It's all there. If you're interested, by the way, all four shirts I was wearing in today's video are now available for pre-order over at Super Carlin Brothers. Uh, dot store. They are all embroidered with very fun, shiny metallic thread. I love them all a lot. You can go check that out. There should be a pinned comment and a link in the description if you uh, want to go pick one up. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you want to see the truth about the dark origins of Dumbledore's wand, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you the life.